continuing with my moment of inertia calculations. I'm going to do both a disc and a hoop. Remember that moment of inertia is defined for point masses as the sum of mi ri squared. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of break this into an infinite number of tiny points and get the moment of inertia by integration. So let's start with the hoop. So here's a hoop, it has a radius r and a mass m, and I'm rotating it about an axis through the center. Okay, that's I should have said that, but I didn't. So let's break this, do like we did before, I'm gonna break this into little pieces dm. So the moment of inertia due to this little piece, di, is gonna be uh, dm r squared. So now I need to add up that for all these pieces going around here. And what you'll notice does not change here is r. The distance from here to there is the same no matter where I am. That's kind of like the definition of a circle. So the this r is just a constant r. So I get r squared times dm. Now I can integrate that and I get i equals r squared, the integral over hoop, I'll just put dm. And I don't really need to do limits of integration. I could set this up as a uh, an integration in polar coordinates and go from theta equals 0 to 2 pi. But it, it seems clear that if I'm adding up, if I break this into an infinitely small number of pieces and I add those pieces all up, I should just get m, right? If I add up all the pieces, if I integrate dm, I get m. And I know m, so I just get m r squared. The end. That's for a hoop or ring, I'm sorry, ring, there you go. Now, uh, there is an assumption here that the uh, the radius for these pieces is the same, which means that the thickness of the material is small compared to R. If that's not true, then that's not true, okay? But, now let's do the disc. So again, we need to break this into pieces, and I could break it into little pieces like this, and then add up all these pieces going around, and I could then I have to change the circle and everything. Okay, but if we're smart, we can pick smarter pieces to break this into. So let me rewrite my disk. It has a radius r, but I'm going to break it into hoops. A radius r. So if I if I let's consider this a bunch of hoops then I can calculate uh, the moment of inertia due to each hoop and just add those up. So let's do that. So this is going to have a radius r. I need to find the mass dm. And that's going to be the hard part, but we can do that. Uh, so first let's just write di equals uh, dm r squared. Yeah, and r is not constant. So now I need to get, if r is changing, I need to get the integration variable dm in terms of r. So let's go back up to this. I know this has a, let's assume this has a constant area density. If that's the case, then the area pi r squared over n, divided by the mass, I did that backwards, but it doesn't really matter, is going to be equal to the same for this disk, this little ring. So if this ring has a, uh, um, I can take this ring and cut it open and split it out like that. It's a rectangle now. So it has a width of dr and it has a length of 2 pi r. So the area of this is going to be 2 pi r dr and the mass is going to be dm. So that has to be true if the density is constant. Now I can solve this for dm and I get dm. I can multiply both sides by dm, divide both sides by pi r squared, multiply both sides by m, and I get dm equals 2 pi r dr m over pi r squared. So the pi's cancel. Let me just write this as 2 m r dr over r squared. The capital R is a constant. So now I can put that in up here and I get i di is the integral of dm r squared. So it's going to be 2m over r squared. Right, I already got that. Then I have an r dr times r cubed. So it's going to be, I mean, r squared, r cubed dr. So now I can integrate both sides and I get i equals the integral of 2m over r squared, that's just a constant, from r equals 0 to r equals r, r cubed dr. 
And now I integrate that, it's a power rule integration. So the integral of r cubed is r to the fourth over four. So I get 2m over four r squared, r to the fourth from zero to r. And that's gonna be 2m over four, uh, that's just half, m over r squared, r to the fourth minus zero, because I've plugged in that down there. And so I get one half, m r squared, because I have r to the fourth over r squared is r squared, and that's i disk. So let's write this up here. This is one half m r squared. This is m r squared. So you see here by breaking into a smart cut, I can calculate the moment of inertia uh, in, a, in a better way, in an in a easier way. We should be able to do this with a, a double integral, a surface integral too, but I just didn't want to do that. And the key here is to cut this into a rectangle. It is a rectangle. Uh, if dr is super small, then that's a legitimate thing, right? Um, so there you go, the end.